Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We are in Morristown, Tennessee today for today's TCCAA action between the Walters State Senators and the Volunteer State Pioneers. Umpires are on the field here at Ken Campbell Field. The ball field is on the campus here in Morristown. The Walter State Senators come in as the number 16 team in the country, sporting a 29 and 9 record. They are 12 and 3 in conference play. A year ago, they were defeated in the TCCAA conference tournament at Volunteer State by Chattanooga State in a bit of a mild upset there. Walter State last year was ranked number one in the country for a good portion of the year. Not sure if they were ranked number one. They were in the top five during the TCCAA conference tournament, I'm confident, but a mild upset as Chattanooga State won the tournament, then went down to Georgia to play their conference tournament winner and ended up losing two out of three. So Region 7 did not have a representative at the JUCO College World Series last year, but Walter State is seemingly headed that way again this year. They will take on the Pioneers, who come in with a 13-18 and record, 3-11 and in the conference. Head coaches Derek Shelton and Jim McGuire Dave Shelton, not Derek Shelton. I knew that didn't sound right. Dave Shelton, the head coach, a longtime head coach here at Walter State. Jim McGuire in his third year with the Pioneers. So they are going over the ground rules. Let's get to the Toyota of Gallatin starting lineup. First for the visiting Pioneers. Leading off playing shortstop, Logan Molnar. Batting second playing left field is Zach Zimmerly. Right fielder Stephen Bell hitting in the three-hole. Cannon Lewis, the DH, batting cleanup. Fifth hitter is the first baseman, Connor Paul. Lex Falsoni behind the plate, batting sixth. Reggie Cooper in center field. He'll hit seventh. Walker Strange from right down the road in Knoxville, Tennessee, is at third base, hitting eighth. Brady Nepper at second base, batting ninth. And on the mound for the Pioneers, six foot seven or eight. Caleb Pika committed to Lipscomb University. He's from Nashville's Overton High School. This will be his 11th appearance of the year, 10th start. 1-6 record, has a couple complete games and a save in his 42-plus innings of work. 3.40 ERA. One of the top ERA leaders in the conference and I think we might have two of the top pitchers in the conference. We have number three and number four going at it here in this nine inning contest. Carson Bonaparte at 3.02 is at three in conference. Leader is Manning West who we will see I'm sure tomorrow make sure I'm saying I do think it is Manning West. He has a 2.45 ERA in 10 appearances. Nine of his are starts as well. So he's having an excellent year. And the lineup, batting lineup for Walter State. Leading off, Miles Smith playing center field. Daniel Ortiz batting second playing third base. Jack Vogley, the three-hole hitter playing left field. Logan Sutton at second base. Batting fourth, Jarrett Martin. The catcher batting fifth, Walker Morgan at first base. He'll hit seven, or sixth. The DH batting seventh is Brantley Bamberg. Curtis Reed, the shortstop, batting eighth. Nate Connor in right field. He'll hit ninth. And on the mound, as I said, Carson Bonaparte, 6'1", 210 pound sophomore from Lincoln, Illinois. He'll get the start here in the single game, first game of the three game series. We are about set for the National Anthem, so we will mute during the National Anthem. Appreciate the uh, assistance today of Athletic Director up here to get us on the Internet. 
Be right back. And if we were back home, Braxton Alexander would say, play ball. We are set for Juco baseball action here in Morristown. We were here a couple of years ago, my first year on the broadcast back in 2022. And they had just gotten the artificial turfed infield. It's natural grass in the outfield. But... They had just turfed, I think, that fall. The infield area all around in front of the dugouts and the warning track area. 315 down the lines here at Ken Campbell Field. 370 in the alleys, 385 to dead center with a large batter's eye straight away center field. Scoreboard in left center field. And the USA flag flying just to the left of that. As it is a chilly day here in Morristown, Tennessee. Right now, a feels like up down in the upper 30s. So we will play today. Doubleheader tomorrow beginning at noon Eastern time. It is coming up on 2 p.m. Eastern. One back home in Gallatin, Tennessee, and where many of you are listening from here on the Ball State Sports Network. I want to thank Derek Creech, the athletic director here, for getting us up and the running on our number one, Logan Molnar. internet. We had some issues with our hotspot not working, so big thanks to... Athletic Director Derek Creech to get us online and set to go. Carson Bonaparte on the mound facing Logan Molnar. The first pitch is fouled down the third base line, and we are underway. Right at 2 p.m. game time temperature brought to you by Accurate Mortgage. It's 44 degrees, feels like 39. One ball, one strike to the Vol State shortstop from Independence High School. Thompson Station is his hometown. Sophomore. Been in the leadoff spot a good bit this year. He's also been plugged in in that three-hole a few games. Bonaparte. Missing with three in a row goes to three balls and a strike. Molnar hitting 284 on the season. This is game number 30 for Logan. Game number 32 for Vol State. Swing and a miss. First full count ministries, full count of the day. Stay tuned after the game. We'll have the full count ministries verse of the game.
And a full count first pitch foul ball off the bat of Logan Molnar. These guys chasing foul balls around here got it easy. They don't have to go digging around in too many trees. The ball's actually keep them, just come on down the hill to you. You don't have to have to climb the hill. Ground ball foul. Coach McGuire with his not even a half-hearted attempt at making a play down there at third base. He will not touch a baseball there. ESPN is not here. Not going to make a play. Fly ball out to right center field. Miles Smith and Nate Connor will come together, and Connor's going to drop the ball. That is not what you want to see if you're Walter State starting off. Logan Molnar reaches on the air. Left fielder, number nine, Zach Zimmerly. Two base error by Nate Connor. Miles Smith diving at his feet, but typically you'll see a center fielder call off a right fielder there. Zach Zimmerly, the left fielder, stands in. Looks at a breaking pitch in there for a called strike. Zimmerly, a red shirt freshman from Hendersonville High School in Hendersonville, Tennessee. Hitting 211, playing game number 19 of the year. Nearly got plunked with that one. Ball and a strike. Zimmerly wearing the hood underneath. Wearing the grays, the road grays. Off-speed pitch misses low and away. And Bonaparte gets the first strike on Zimmerly again, and now has gone 2-1. Went to 3-1 on Molnar and then fought back. Gets the call there, and the count goes two balls and two strikes. Zimmerly, 6'1", 180 pounds. It's ground ball to the left side. Ortiz looks the runner back to second and throws on to first for out number one. Hello to Jody and Brandy, Brandy Zimmerly, Zach's parents. Not sure if they're here or not. Probably get an email later from Jody at tresports at gmail.com. Stephen Bell steps in, the right fielder. Swings at the first pitch, comes up empty. Bell hitting 288. He's also playing in game number 30 of the year. He and Molnar lead the squad. Swing and a miss on a changeup. He's down in the count, no balls and two strikes. And lifting out to shortstop, an easy pop-up for Curtis Reed for out number two. Cannon Lewis, the DH, steps to the plate. Cannon Lewis. I think Cannon's parents are here, Ryan and Daphne. He's a red-shirt sophomore from Beach High School in Hendersonville. Transfer from Roan State. Two homers, 17 RBIs on the year. Molnar reached on the air to begin the game. Fly ball out to right center field. It was dropped by Nate Connor, the right fielder. Two outs, runner at second now on a 3-0 count to Lewis. Connor Paul standing on deck. Four-pitch walk to the DH. Brings up freshman Connor Paul. Connor Paul. 
Bonaparte with only seven walks and 47 and two-thirds innings coming into this game. 51 strikeouts. First one to Paul is high. Freshman from Ravenwood High School. Leading the team in hitting 361. Looking for his first long ball of the year. Breaking pitch gets in there. Connor with 15 RBIs, 22 hits. Lines one over the head of Curtis Reed. That'll get into the gap. Molnar is going to come onto the plate for the Framework Athletics first run of the game. Driven in by Connor Paul. Ball State takes the early one to nothing lead. That is an unearned run. But the 16th RBI of the year for Connor Paul. Lewis moves down to second base. And Lex Falsoni takes the shin guards on and off and steps to the plate. Swing and a miss. Falsoni, a freshman from Stewart's Creek High School. Looks at strike two. Hitting 289 on the season. 13 hits, four doubles. He's got one long ball. Swing and a miss. Three pitches, and down goes Falsoni. Pioneers score one run on one hit, one big error. And leave two on. We'll go to the bottom of the first. Vol State leads one to nothing. You're listening to the Vol State Sports Network. All working in the cloud. But what really is the cloud? If you start pulling back the clouds themselves, you find out it's an infrastructure. Computer science is really computer engineering. Right now, Middle Tennessee is quickly becoming a growing tech hub with several IT companies that are looking for skilled workers. If you're pursuing the CIT program at Ball State, you're preparing yourself to fill those positions. Every day, all around the nation, people find themselves in need of a hero. Fire and emergency medical responders are those heroes we need. If you desire to make a difference in your community, visit ballstate.edu to learn more. Have you ever wondered what happens when you click buy it now? A whole series of transactions take place from the manufacturer to your front door. That is logistics and supply chain management. At Vol State, we offer end-to-end -end supply chain courses. Going into the future, our students need to understand these processes. A lot of business is dependent upon getting a product on time. Students here at Vol State are able to leave here with that knowledge. Because the supply chain is counting on me. Tim Reese back on the Vol State Sports Network. Caleb Pika out on the mound with a one to nothing lead as we go to the bottom of the first inning. Miles Smith, Daniel Ortiz, and Jack Vogley. The first three to face Pika. Got his first win of the year last weekend against Dyersburg State after losing his first six games. His 10th start of the year, 11th appearance, had a relief appearance. Got a save in that game. He's thrown 42 in the third innings, struck out 56 batters. Going to have to watch the control today, make sure don't mix in too many walks. This is an excellent hitting team. First pitch misses low and inside to Miles Smith. Smith is a redshirt sophomore, two-way player. He'll get on the mound as well. 6'1", 180 pounds from Fayetteville, Tennessee. Pitch gets in there for a called strike. Two balls and a strike to Miles Smith. That one's going to catch the corners. He backs out of there a little bit, but our home plate umpire decided that is a strike. 2-2. Two -two. That'll go down in the turf. 
for another full count, ministry's full count. Smith hitting 346, fouls that one off. Playing in game number 30. He's got 18 hits, four doubles, a triple, four home runs as Walter State leads the conference in home runs by a lot. There's a leadoff walk. Third Not what Kayla Pico is looking for here to begin against a team that hits 354. They've lapped the conference in home runs, averaging over 10 runs a game. If 70 home runs, Smith does not go to pitch to Ortiz in their first strike. Ortiz leads the conference in home runs. He's got 10. I think he was second in the conference a year ago. Fouls that one off to the right side. He might have been one behind Jace Mizell, the Ball State Pioneers, a year ago. A good-looking player. Throw over to first. Smith on first move. Looked like he was bluffing towards second. Not a huge lead. Ortiz from Lynn, Massachusetts, but I believe he went and played up. High school baseball in Georgia. Oh, two pitches up. Smith has five stolen bases, has yet to be caught. Does not go on this pitch. Swung on and fouled off. One two pitch is high. Ortiz is not bite on the high fastball. On deck is Jack Vogley, the one of the leading hitters in the conference. Another foul ball off to the right side. Nice wide open press box here with lots of windows, lots of chairs up here. And 44 degree weather, 39 feels like temperature. It's standing room only in here. Lifted out the right field, Stephen Bell over toward the line and back a few steps. He's going to make the catch. Miles Smith's going to tag up. Looks like he might have left a hair early. We'll see if they challenge that. If he didn't leave early, he got a great break. Doesn't look like anybody's well, left fielder, number 13, interested in an appeal there, so Smith will move up on the flyout. Jack Vogley, Cincinnati kid, stands in there. Looks at a called strike from Loveland, Ohio. 6'3", 225 pounds. Transfer, according to the fall roster, says he's from the University of Cincinnati. Former Bearcat fouls it off. Loveland inside the Hamilton County District. Near Redding, Ohio. Wyoming, Ohio. Breaking pitch misses low and in. My hometown of Cincinnati, I'm a coal ring cardinal, though. We didn't get over and play Loveland at all. Vogley off the end of the bat. Ground ball to Nepper at second. He gloves and throws on to first base. For out number two, 
Miles Smith moving around the base pass, 90 feet at a time. Standing at third with two outs, Vogley leading the conference and hitting with a 456 batting average. Pioneers facing two of the best, and Miles Smith has not scored. Logan Sutton steps in. He's only hitting 395. Fastball misses up and away. Got six home runs, 35 RBIs. Sutton, local boy from Knoxville, Tennessee, transferred from ETSU. That catches the outside corner. They're called strike, 1-1. One, one. Red shirt sophomore, 6'1", 205 pounds. He could try and work around a leadoff walk. Breaking pitch, nice block by Falsoni behind the plate. Keeps Smith at third. Head coach Dave Shelton is the third base coach. Is that Mike Korn down at first base? It is. Former head coach at Columbia State for 20-plus years. Fastball is up in his second year here with Walter State. Three one pitch to the second baseman Logan Sutton. He's going to draw a walk, but runners at the corners for Jarrett Martin. The catcher number twenty one, Jarrett Martin. Martin from Savannah, Tennessee, six three, two hundred fifteen pound redshirt sophomore. Hitting 352, playing in game number 35. Peeking now with two outs and runners at the corners. Runner to first does not go. Into first pitch in there for a called strike. Pika is second in the conference coming into today's game. In strikeouts, 56. He gets a called strike there. He'd be happy with a strikeout in this situation with two on and two out in the bottom of the first. And a swing and a miss as runner from first took off early. And Pika said, I don't care. I'm just going to throw the pitch. And the changeup is swung on and missed. No runs, no hits. No errors, two runners left on base, a couple walks. And Pika ends up working around the two walks in the inning. He'll have to figure that out if he's going to go deep into this game. We'll take a break, be right back for the second on the Vol State Sports Network. I took business management because I want to have my own business one day. But it was time for me to take that step and enroll in Ball State. When a student comes to Ball State, they can leave here with knowledge that applies to all aspects of business. A degree in criminal justice can help you find the exciting career that you've been looking for. As a member of law enforcement, as a crime scene investigator, a teacher in a classroom, a detective working on cases, a lawyer or a judge, or nearly any job where you get to put the bad guys away. Learn more at volstate.edu. Cybercrimes take place online, and companies need more well-trained workers to stop it. Vol State is training me to help combat cyber crimes in the future. We're training them for those type of jobs that are out there. Vol State CIT programs prepare students to earn industry standard certifications within the IT industry. I choose Vol State because the future needs me now. My story could be your story. Cooper. Reggie Cooper leading off the top of the second inning. Pioneers leading. One to nothing. Cooper tried to check his swing and fouls that one off to the on-deck circle. 
Cooper, a sophomore transfer from Cleveland State. Now down in the count, 0-2. Working quickly, Carson Bonaparte. Looks like he's making concerted effort to get ahead of the hitters here. He's slider misses low and away, dot one and two. Cooper, like Lex Falsoni, played his high school baseball at Stewart's Creek. They're in the Smyrna, Tennessee area. Nice block by Martin on the pitch down in the turf. Full count, ministry's full count to Reggie Cooper, the team leader in home runs. He's going to get a strike three called on that outside corner, though. Two Ks in a row for Bonaparte. Third baseman, number 17, Walker Strange. It's not too far behind Caleb Pico coming in. He had 51, Pico with 56. Walker Strange steps to the plate. There's a pitch that whispered out the outside corners that went by, called a strike. Strange from Knoxville, Tennessee. Hits ground ball. That will sneak on through the five and a half hole and get in the left field for a base hit. Strange with the second safety of the game for the Pioneers. Connor second Paul had an RBI three, single in the first. Brady Nepper, the nine-hole hitter, steps in with one out and one on. Looks dark on the screen, but I think there's enough light out here for these folks to play some baseball. No lights here at Ken Campbell Field. But I understand they're working on that. Strange at first base, not a threat to steal. Transfer from Lipscomb University over to Vol State. Brady Nepper, a transfer from Cumberland University. Been at a 1-1 count from Bonaparte. Line drive, softly hit. Logan Sutton makes the catch, throws on over to the six foot seven first baseman, Walker Morgan. Strange back. Back to the top of the lineup, Logan Molnar. Shortstop, number one. Reached on an air by the right fielder. Came around to score on Connor Paul's single. Steps to the play with two outs and one on. Molnar hitting 284. Five doubles, a triple. He's got one home run. Slider a little bit high. Don't think we actually have a large percentage chance of rain, but you wouldn't look at it by seeing the clouds now. That ball gets by Martin. Official score is not here in the press box. We're gonna see if that's a unless you're gonna you can all right. I'm looking back at a what I call a replay. There's a slider in there for a called strike. Get that runner down to second base. And Molnar will look at another three ball, one strike count with a runner in scoring position now on the wild pitch. Ground ball to third in the turf, but dug out of there by Walker Morgan for out number three. Hard hit ball off the bat of Molnar, but Ortiz able to pick it and Get a nice hop over there for Morgan. No runs, one hit, no errors. One runner left on base. Vol State still leads one to nothing. I'd like to thank Toyota of Gallatin for their support of Vol State baseball. Donated 
Brand new scoreboards for the baseball, softball, and the basketball teams. Thanks to Eric Carr, the general manager, and general sales manager, Jake Thompson. We are working to get those commercials that head coaches Johnny Lynn and Jim McGuire have performed in for Toyota of Gallatin. Just got my Tundra serviced over there. Thanks to Emily Smith and the group over there in the service department for getting that done quickly. If you're looking for a new or used vehicle, contact Wayne Hobdy, my salesperson, 615-230-9000. Thanks again, beautiful scoreboards out in left center field, both the Tim Garrett Baseball Complex and the Nichols Softball Complex, and inside the Pickle Fieldhouse. Also like to thank Summit Concrete, they sponsor our call to the bullpen. Chuck Akers, the owner of Summit Concrete over there in Murfreesboro, former player of Coach McGuire. They've been very helpful in doing things around Pioneer Field. So we are set for the bottom of the second. Walker Morgan, the first baseman with a large strike zone, looks at a ball. Walker Morgan, Brantley Bamberg, and Curtis Reed. As Mike Korn, the late, late arriving first base coach, hustles over to his spot. Morgan from Montgomery, Alabama. There's a strike call. Redshirt freshman, 6'7", 230 pounds. Hitting 345. Strike two on the outside corner. Pico walked two in the first, but struck out Jarrett Martin on a changeup, swing and a miss on a break, or swing and a foul ball on a breaking pitch. Morgan with 20 hits on the season, a couple doubles, five home runs, 21 RBIs. Playing in game number 32. It's a shot base hit in the left field. It split the third baseman and shortstop. The designated First hit of the game for the Senators goes to Walker Morgan. First time that I've been calling a game, we've had two Walkers in the starting lineup. Walker Strange, the third baseman. Walker Morgan, the first baseman for Walters State. wonder how many times I'm going to call him Walker's State with these walkers on the field. Brantley Bamberg, the DH. Looks at a ball high. From Murfreesboro, Tennessee, 6'1", 240. Says when he's on the field, he's a catcher. He's the DH in this ball game. He's going to square around a bunt, pulls the bat back, and apparently the pitch was inside. Bamberg does not have a sacrifice hit all year. He's squaring around again and pulls the bat back. That's... Apparently, we are not interested in sacrificing. Might just be an issue with regard to Pika's control issues at times. Bamberg calls timeout. Home plate umpire's got to document that. Bamberg's going to get back in thinking we're ready to play, but we don't get ready to play until the umpire says go. So Walker Morgan on it first with a leadoff single, swinging a foul ball off to the right side. Those three square around and fake bunts for Brantley Bamberg. Curtis Reed, the shortstop, is on deck. Another Cincinnati kid. There's a line drive that will get down in front of Zach Zimmerly. Back-to-back -back hits to start off the second inning for Walter State. 
Shortstop, number nine, Curtis Reed. Curtis Reed from Hamilton, Ohio, just outside of Nashville, or outside of Cincinnati. Second-year player here with Walter State, 6'2", 200 pounds. Transferred from Louisville. He will square around, fake the bunt, breaking pitch called a strike. Somebody told me that his father may have played at Belmont University, maybe Belmont College. I'm not sure that's the case. Anybody know that? You don't have that intel? So that's my alma mater. Belmont? Belmont College when I played there. Squares around, he fouls that one back. 40 years ago. O2 count to Curtis Reed. Nate Connor, the right fielder, is on deck. Two on, nobody out. Pika looking for a do that double play. And it might get one. Molnar backhand is going to throw the third. And he's going to get the lead runner as Coach Shelton is admonishing Morgan for not getting down. It's that lead. That was the only play that Logan Molnar had. I don't know how in the world I had another right out up field. there, but it is only one out. So Reed grounds into the fielder's choice. Bamberg moves up to second base, and Nate Connor swinging it from the left side stands in. Lefty on lefty matchup. Breaking pitch in there for a called strike. Pika trying to wiggle off the hook here in the bottom of the second, just as he did in the bottom of the first with two on and two out. Got two on and one out here. Fastball's up. Nate Connor, one of two players hitting over 400 for the Senators, he's hitting 403. Strike called. Lined into left field, Zimmerly charges gloves. He's going to get it in quick enough to. Keep the runner at third, but bases are now loaded. With the top of the order, Miles Smith stepping to the plate. So three singles to left field. One, Miles Smith. Smith walked in the first, but was stranded at third. Connor's a freshman from Johnson City. Not too far away, Science Hill High School. Smith looks at ball one on the inside. <coughs> Lincoln County High School, where this red shirt sophomore went. Spot for Caleb Pika and the Pioneers. A ground ball to the left. Strange will go to second. On to first is in time for the 5 4 3 Dudette double play. Just got Miles Smith. But I don't think he agrees with that call. And Dave Shelton's asking for the base umpire to come over and have a chat about that. But I don't think the Decision's going to get changed, so we'll write that one in the book, a 5-4-3. to four to three. Do that double play to end the inning. Just what the doctor ordered for Caleb Pika. Nice play by Strange and a nice turn by Brady Nepper. Gets the Pioneers out of 
damage. Three hits in the inning. No runs, no errors. Two runners left on base. We are headed to the top of the third one to nothing. Vol State leads. You're listening to the Vol State Sports Network. All working in the cloud. But what really is the cloud? If you start pulling back the clouds themselves, you find out it's an infrastructure. Computer science is really computer engineering. Right now, Middle Tennessee is quickly becoming a growing tech hub with several IT companies that are looking for skilled workers. If you're pursuing the CIT program at Ball State, you're preparing yourself to fill those positions. Every day, all around the nation, people find themselves in need of a hero. Fire and emergency medical responders are those heroes we need. If you desire to make a difference in your community, visit ballstate.edu to learn. Top of the third we go, two, three, and four. Due up for the Pioneers, Zach Zimmerly, Stephen Bell, and Cannon Lewis. Pioneers with a one to nothing lead. We move to the third. Thanks for joining us on the all State Sports Network. He's going to square around a bump, but that was a little bit too far or too close to the pitcher. Bonaparte doesn't have to get off the mound too far. And he's going to throw Zimmerly out one pitch. Right fielder, number 22, Stephen Bell. Stephen Bell popped out to the shortstop in the first inning, steps in. Transfer from Alderson Broadus. School that completely shut down in West Virginia. He looks at a strike. Played for the Hoppers in the Ohio Valley League. This past summer. Swing and a miss. The Hoptown Hoppers still playing, I think, in Ohio Valley League. That league has really changed since last year. Eleven teams in the league, Summer Collegiate League, last year, but several changes. Swing and a miss, and he's down on strikes. Third strikeout for Bonaparte. Two quickly out here in the top of the third. The designated hitter, number 30, Cannon Lewis. Cannon Lewis walked in the first, was stranded at second. Fastball misses away. Lewis playing in game number 21. He's got a 240 average. Check swing foul ball. Cam Hodges out of the Pioneer dugout to track that one down. He won the Easter egg contest, uh, hunting contest last weekend. He's just showing off. One, two count. Nobody on, two out. Tapper foul. First base dugout, pretty good distance away from home plate. Connor Paul feels like he's Good distance away. Cannon Lewis looks at a breaking pitch for called strike three. One, two, three inning for Walter State and Carson Bonaparte. He now has four strikeouts in three innings. And the first one, two, three inning of the ball game for either team. Ball State still leads one to nothing. Again, like to thank our sponsors, MGM Industries, Right Rug Flooring, Dudak Communications, and Coca-Cola for their help with refurbishing, revamping the press box back at Pioneer Field. Joe Gaskins and Patrick Stewart donated 
custom windows and installation for the press box and right rug flooring Carrie Gilbert salesman friend of mine that got some carpeting and a crew to come and install that as well and Craig Sennard over at Dudat Communications for some printing and some signage and Amos Blake at Coca-Cola for our nice little mini fridge that we have up there that the folks have come to take advantage of the drinks that have just mysteriously show up in uh, in that refrigerator. But thanks again to MGM Industries, Right Rug Flooring, Dudat Communications, and Coca-Cola. Makes uh, home games a lot nicer for this broadcaster. And Braxton Alexander, our public address announcer. Sometimes the scoreboard operator will sit up there instead of down in the dugout as well. Alex Qualls, sometimes Brody Melton, sometimes Devin Thrain. Cole Ulrich has he been apparently uh, taking his time on the clock. First pitch from Pika. Two Ortiz in there for a called strike. That was a little bit too far outside. Ortiz flew out to Stephen Bell in right field in the first. Did not offer at the breaking pitch. It landed low. Fouled off to the right side. Count goes two balls and two strikes. Caleb Pika, 6'8", 185 pounds. Sophomore exercise science major. Headed to the Atlantic Sun Conference in the fall with Lipscomb University. That drilled out to right center field. Back goes Bell. Let's see if that stays in the park. It does. Bounces off the wall and Ortiz pulls into second base with his ninth double of the year. Another leadoff hit for Walter State. That's their fourth hit of the game. Vogley, who leads the team with 47 hits, steps to the plate. Grounded out to second base in the first. Very close stance. That front foot is way toward first base, and a breaking pitch gets in there for a called strike. Played at Cincinnati Hills Christian Academy. Another breaking pitch called strike. Vogley not offering at breaking pitches, at least in the first two that he's seen in this at bat. All State with an unearned run in the top of the first leads one to nothing over the 16th ranked team in the country. Falsoni keeps the ball in front of him, but Ortiz sees that he didn't know where it was, and he will motor on down to third base on the wild pitch. Pika's fifth wild pitch of the year. Gets Ortiz at third with nobody out. Vogley started to go at the high fastball, but able to hold up. Game time temperature was 44 degrees, felt like 39. Popped up in the infield, this might be playable. Walker Strange in, nobody else there to help him and he's gonna make the catch in foul territory for out number one. Big out right there for the Pioneers. Second baseman, number 25, Logan Sutton. Logan Sutton. Second baseman, a cleanup hitter for Walter State stands in. Powell High School, 
Knoxville, Tennessee. 6'1", 205-pound redshirt sophomore. I believe Powell High School is where Charlie Smith, the number one pitcher for Chattanooga State, where he went to high school. Charlie Smith heading to Memphis University. I'm sure several of these guys have already committed. I'll see if I can get that information. Be able to deliver that to you tomorrow. Swing and a miss on the changeup. It's not information that I have at my fingertips currently, but may see if I can get my research staff out to tell me. So we already got we already got the intel coming. High and outside. Logan or Jarrett Martin is heading to Campbell. He's gonna be he's gonna be a camel. A Campbell camel. Two two grounded foul. Jacksonville State in Alabama. Carson Bonaparte is. All right, this is this is uh, raw information here, folks. This has not been vetted. <laughs> two two pitch, swing and a miss. Pika gets his second strikeout, and that will bring up Jarrett Martin, who was his first strikeout. Okay, tell me that again. K-State, okay. All right. Miles Smith and Taz Butler reportedly going to Kansas State. First pitch to Jarrett Martin in there for a called strike. And the bat goes flying over the fence, swing and a miss. No spectators hurt by that flying bat. Young man needs some stick em on that those gloves. O2 pitch. Oh, the infield was headed toward the uh, dugout, but the only opinion that mattered Home plate umpire did not agree. One, two pitches up. <laughs> Riley Franklin, right? That's what you said. How old are you in that picture, Riley? Twelve year old picture. <laughs> Pretty sure Riley Frank Franklin didn't think he was going to be seeing a picture of himself as Caleb Pika gets out of the jam with a swinging strikeout by Jarrett Martin. He has gone down on strikes twice now. And Walter State can't push across a leadoff double. The so next three batters are set down. One more runner left on base. We are through three, headed, headed to the fourth. We're scheduled for nine innings here. Thanks for joining me, Tim Reese on the Ball State Sports Network. I took business management because I want to have my own business one day. But it was time for me to take that step and enroll in Ball State. When a student comes to Ball State, they can leave here with knowledge that applies to all aspects of business. A degree in criminal justice can help you find the exciting career that you've been looking for. As a member of law enforcement, as a crime scene investigator, a teacher in a classroom, a detective working on cases, a lawyer or a judge, or nearly any job where you get to put the bad guys away. Learn more at ballstate.edu. Cybercrimes take place online. 
and companies need more well-trained workers to stop it. Vol State is training me to help combat cyber crimes in the future. We're training them for those type of jobs that are out there. Ball State CIT programs prepare students to earn industry standard certifications within the IT industry. I choose Vol State because the future needs me now. My story could be your story. Connor Paul will lead off the top of the fourth. He'll be followed by Lex Falsoni and then Richie Cooper. The Pioneers lead one to nothing. Carson Bonaparte. It's Paul to swing at the first pitch and a couple hops to Walker Morgan. I didn't even get my scoreboard changed over and there's already one out. Second inning in a row that the leadoff batter was retired on one pitch. Connor Paul now one for two. Lex Falsoni struck out to end the first. Steps in. So Paul White, who's listening in, sent me a picture. I think it was a couple weeks ago while we were down at Roan State as a couple pioneers, Walker Strange and Parker White, played Little League Baseball or some, maybe it's probably Travel Ball be my guess, with Luke Lowry of Roan State and Riley Franklin, who's sitting right next to me in the press box here become my uh, researcher. I believe it's doesn't matter now. We got a ground ball to second base. And the glove flip by Logan Sutton. Retires foul Sony. So a couple Center ground field, balls to the right Reggie side. Cooper. Two outs and Reggie Cooper steps up. He saw three pitches from Carson Bonaparte, struck out on the third one, looking. And puts the hands up, pulls the midsection back, and it's called strike. Cooper leads the Pioneers with 23 strikeouts, now 24. Pops that one up to the right side. Walker Morgan over. He's going to make the catch. In the coach's box, four out number three, another one, two, three inning for Carson Bonaparte. He's now retired eight in a row. We will go to the bottom of the fourth. I'd like to thank hit after hit. Lem Pilkington over at 705 Air Park Center Drive in Nashville, Tennessee. The sporting goods store, you can catch them online at hitafterhitonline.com or 615-399-BATS-2287. He's the Rawlings contact for Coach McGuire and a lot of the apparel I think they get over there from Hit After Hit. And we'd also like to thank Allie Cassidy Brick and Stone. We'll have an alumni spotlight a little later on in the ball game. But Randy West, one of the owners for Allie Cassidy Brick, used to be a neighbor of mine. And talked to him about some brick pavers for our alumni brick patio. So he contacted Keith Green there at the Gallatin Yard, just right around the corner from Vol State's campus there in Gallatin. And... Two days later, I think we had a pallet load of brick pavers there. So appreciate Randy West and the folks at Alley Cassidy Brick and Stone. That's A-L-L-E-Y dash Cassidy, C-A-S-S-E-T-T-Y. They don't spell it like my daughter, C-A-S-S-I-D-Y. Alley Cassidy Brick and Stone. They've got locations all over the place, Tennessee, Georgia, Kentucky, and Alabama. Carter Waltz's dad, Richard Waltz, is also a division manager up in Clarksville, Tennessee. Hello, First Richard. Number 28, Walker Morgan. Bottom of the fourth we go. Walker Morgan, Brantley Bamberg, and Curtis Reed to face Caleb Pika out for inning number four. Fast ball's up. That'll catch the inside corner. 
So I'd like to put Kayla Pika and Walker Morgan back to back here. See who's actually six eight and who's actually six seven. Did that with Myquan Tucker, basketball player for Vol State. As Caleb Pika and Tucker played against each other in high school, Overton and Pearl Cone. Swing and a miss. Change up. Three strikeouts in a row for Caleb Pika. He now has four. Walker Morgan is from Montgomery, Alabama, Home Life Academy. Surely he played basketball as well. Brantley Bamberg, who singled in the second, looks at a ball. Had a couple singles, a fielder's choice, and then another single. In that second inning, had bases loaded. With one out, Miles Smith grounded into the 5 4 3 double play to end the inning. Bamberg swings at a pitch going away from him. He's down in the count, one ball and two strikes. Drills that one to left field. If it's fair, it's trouble. It will fall foul as Zach Zimmerly goes over and picks that up. Would not have gotten out, but it was extra bases. It's what we used to call the old Thomas E. Hawk swing. Bamberg, Tommy Hawk, that one. A couple buildings out there in left center field. Trees down the right field line and a change of foul tipped into Falsoni's glove. And now four strikeouts in a row for Pika. The son of John and April Pika. The shortstop, number nine, Curtis Reed. Grandparents, both sets in Illinois. Papa and Grandma in Fairbury and Pasodum, Illinois. It's a first pitch strike to Curtis Reed. Reed grounded into the fielder's choice. Ground ball into the hole. It's short. Nubs that one down the first baseline. And Connor Paul will bare hand. Toss it into his dugout. 0-2 pitch coming to Curtis Reed, the shortstop. O2 pitch just a little bit too high right there. Pika staying in Nashville for his four year collegiate career at Lipscomb University. Drive again down that left field line, but it will hook foul. Just had the first iteration of the Battle of the Boulevard baseball wise. Belmont University defeated Lipscomb University this past week. Forty years ago when I played, that was the biggest rivalry, rivalry way bigger than North Carolina Duke. Swing at a foul ball. At least in our world it was. Two miles separate the two schools. One-two pitch to Reed. Swing and a miss. Pika strikes out the side. Gets Reed on strikes. Caleb Pika gets his first one, two, three inning of the ball game. Has scattered four hits. One to nothing. We are through four. Be right back. All working in the cloud. But what really is the cloud? If you start pulling back the clouds themselves, you find out it's an infrastructure. Computer science 
is really computer engineering. Right now, Middle Tennessee is quickly becoming a growing tech hub with several IT companies that are looking for skilled workers. If you're pursuing the CIT program at Ball State, you're preparing yourself to fill those positions. Every day, all around the nation, people find themselves in need of a hero. Fire and emergency medical responders are those heroes we need. If you desire to make a difference in your community, visit ballstate.edu to learn more. Tim Reese back at Walter State as the Pioneers are on the road Friday and Saturday. Single game day, nine inning contest in a two seven inning contest tomorrow beginning at noon Eastern time. Walter State, number 16 in the country, 29 and nine is their record. Coming in, they are 12 and three in conference play. Walker Strange, Brady Nepper, and Logan Molnar set to face Carson Bonaparte, who gets the swing and miss. Strange singled in the second, was stranded at second base. Another off-speed pitch misses, low and away. Round ball toward the Senators' dugout. A year ago, Walter State did not lose a ball game here at home, 29-0. This year, they've lost two. Those two losses are to two teams that are in the top ten in the country. Gaston College and Georgia Highlands. Those games were played in February. Another tapper foul. Walter State is 13 and 2 at home. We're 51 and 10 a year ago. Tough defeat to Chattanooga State. I broadcasted that on the Vol State Sports Network a year ago. We'll have a full count. Ministries full count to Walker Strange. And a number that will stay fair down the first baseline. And Walker Morgan's going to make his second unassisted out. Second baseman, number Lead three. Leadoff batter of the Nepper. fourth inning, Connor Paul, grounded out to Morgan. So Brady Nepper, who had a soft line drive to Logan Sutton in the second, stands in. A couple of highlights of the year last year for Pioneers in conference play. One as Walter State came to Gallatin last year. It's ground ball back up the middle. Bonaparte casually makes that catch and throw over to Morgan for out number two. Ball, ball State one, was up Molnar. two to one in the first game of the series a year ago. Walter State ended up scoring three runs to take a four to one or four to two lead. Ball State scored one in the bottom of the ninth, but could not push across anymore and lost four to three. But in game one of the doubleheader the next day, it was all pioneers. Ball State won that game twenty three to six. I haven't done that research, but I'm pretty sure that might have been one of the worst losses for Walter State. One they don't want to hear about, I know. But for the Pioneers, it was a memorable game. Molnar could not hold up on that disappearing act of a pitch right there. Count goes one ball and two strikes. 
Seven inning contest was ended in five innings, 23 to six as Fall State. I think I did do a little look, and I don't think Walter State was run ruled last year. And Bonaparte with his third straight three up, three down inning. Gets strikeout number five. He is rolling along now. Giving up one unearned run. Only two hits. And has re retired the last ten batters that he's faced. Meanwhile, Walter State keeps putting runners on, although Pika has retired six in a row after the leadoff double in the third by Daniel Ortiz. And Ortiz will be the third batter due up for Walter State here in the bottom of the fifth. Let's get to our Allie Cassidy Brick and Stone alumni spotlight. Last weekend we did the son of the Darnell duo, Ryan Darnell. Today we'll do Randy Darnell. He was with the Pioneers as a catcher the first year of their existence, 1973. He was there in 1973 and 1974 as a catcher. Then he also donned the coach's hat, Had was an assistant coach. Don't have the years for that, but he's been an assistant coach all around Sumner County. I know he's been at Beach High School, at Hendersonville High School, Pope John Paul II, now known as Pope Prep. At some point in time, I don't really have all of where he's been, but he's got a brick in the alumni brick patio. So thanks to the Darnells as they have gotten their brick. If you have a sophomore or second year player at Vol State, as a grandson or a son, and you would like to memorialize their time at Vol State, send me an email at tresports at gmail.com, and I will get you the information. Nate Connor, single to left field, looks now at two strikes, did that last at bat. Doesn't seem flummoxed at all about being down in the count 0-2. He looks like the kind of hitter that's just going to go ahead and Tap one over the left side, but this one he pops up. Caleb Pika is going to come in and make the catch for the first out here in the bottom of the fifth. The center fielder, number one, Miles Smith. Connor now one for two. As Miles Smith steps to the plate. Grounded into a double play. His last at bat, he's walked. As well, looks at a ball high. It's going to catch the knees over the plate. Count goes one ball, one strike. Miles Smith has also pitched in seven games. Five and a third innings. Foul off to the right side. Walter State is a team hitting 354. Miles Smith comes in at 346. One, two, three, four. Ninth on the squad at 346. That's a good hitting team. Change up misses down. Full count ministries, full count thanks to Josh Carmen, the director of baseball operations over at Full Count Ministries. Reed Glover for allowing us to use a lot of the broadcast equipment that we use for Full Count Rhythm. Summer collegiate team moving to the Prospect League. Use that for Vol State as well. Swinging a foul tip. Smith stays alive. Pika delivers. Swing and a miss and a high fastball. That would have been ball four. But Miles... Smith helps out the Pioneers with that swing. Third baseman, number 27, Daniel Ortiz. Daniel Ortiz, one for two, stands in. Doubled and flew out. 
able to check his swing there on ball one. Change up catches the plate at the letters. Belmont won that game against Lipscomb nine to five over at Ken Dugan Field. Ball two strikes, two outs, and nobody on. Another changeup misses down. Swing and a miss. Pika rolling along. We have two number ones here today that are dialed in. Kayla Pika with his eighth strikeout of the game. He has retired nine straight. Wall State with one run on two hits. Senators no runs on four hits. We are through five scheduled for nine innings. One to nothing, Vol State hanging on to that slim lead. I'd like to continue thanking our sponsors. These folks have outfield signs out on the fence at Pioneer Field. The Rock Place, the Curbing Edge, Wilson Bank and Trust, Full Count Ministries, Jersey Mike's, Accurate Mortgage, the American Legion Post 17, MGM Industries, line to line, game time sports field. Hit after hit, Alley Cassidy Brick, Framework Athletics. All have signs. Dudak Communications has one out there. And Toyota Gallatin, of course, has the big sign on the scoreboard. Left fielder, number nine, Zach Zimmerly. Zach Zimmerly, double Z. Can't call him ZZ. That's my wife's grandmother name. Not her grandmother. That's what they call it. My grandkids call my wife a ZZ. Swing and a miss, says Zimmerly. Tries to get on Bonaparte early. Tried to lay down a bunt in the third and got that one a little bit too close to the pitcher. Gets that one down to third base. It is a fair ball, Ortiz. From deep in the hole, throw over, does not get Zimmerly. Legs out the infield single. Ortiz was on the fair line. About 10 feet behind third base. Strong throw down right field, low. But it was on target, just was not on time. And a leadoff single by Zimmerly. He's now one for three. Stephen Bell comes to the plate, popped out to the shortstop. He's going to square around. We'll pull the bat back. And unlike Brantley Bamberg, who was just play acting on trying to lay down a sacrifice bunt, Stephen Bell is not going to be play acting. He's going to be actually trying to do it. But this is the situation for it. Bamberg's was not. Two different teams heading in two different directions right here. Vol State just trying to get a win against top-ranked team. Square about. That will get down. Bonaparte's going to try to go to second, and he's going to get the lead runner. Nice play off the mound by Carson Bonaparte. The bunt right back to the pitcher. The designated hitter, number 30. So a fielder's choice will retire Zimmerly. And with one out, Cannon Lewis steps to the plate. Nice stop by Martin.
Another pitch outside. Lewis has walked and struck out looking. His two home runs hit down in Motlow State. They were back-to-back. -back. First two at-bats of that two-game series. It's a ground ball. That's going to roll into left field for a base hit. Pioneers have two runners on here with one out. They pick up their fourth hit. Lewis now one for two. Connor Paul, who's also one for two, steps to the plate. With runners at first and second, he delivered an RBI single in the first. Bonaparte, it's a breaking pitch in there for a called strike. Change up misses down. On deck, Lex foul Sony. So an infield single by Zimmerly and a fielder's choice by Bell on a Bunt, that's a nice play by Logan Sutton. As he dives to his left, his only play was to get Connor Paul. I had to look through a pole here to see if he actually got it. When I saw him get up, the ball doesn't go into right field. I see that he's able to make the play. Both runners move up 90 feet, but a nice play. 